Is this video demonstration showcasing ray tracing captured on a mysterious big Navi or the upcoming RX 6900 XT? Well, a few days ago, Microsoft announced a new API called DX12 Ultimate. And if you're wondering, yes, it is still called DX12 because it isn't a roundup change. Instead, it's a lot of additions that Nvidia initially introduced with RTX and their Turing based GPUs. And now Microsoft is putting many of those features in DX12, which ultimately gave birth to DX12. DX12 Ultimate. With DX12 Ultimate, we get added support for variable ray shading and something called mesh shaders, which is a new exciting technology that we're gonna look into in a bit later in this video. DXR or ray tracing is also an added feature here. And now, as Microsoft announced DX12 Ultimate, Nvidia and AMD was fast to respond by showing us what DXR Ultimate looks like running on their current and upcoming GPUs. And I have to say, Nvidia is doing a much better job. Job when it comes to picking the right video render settings because their DXR12 Ultimate demo looks a whole lot better. Very smooth frame rate and everything just looks great. Well, let me know what you think. AMD's demonstration on the other hand isn't as impressive and it almost looks like the demo was captured on a Radeon 7970 from 2012. It's a lot of stutter presented in the video and it's uh, more of a slideshow but hopefully this is just a mess up in post and hopefully the actual demo ran a lot smoother than what the video showcases. It's a lot of shiny objects nonetheless. At this point it is still very unclear what AMD got in plan for us but I figured let's have a look at the rumored specs for AMD's upcoming flagship Big Navi uh, or the possible 5950 XT or maybe the 6900 XT release date and possible performance figures and then after that let's take a look at what Microsoft's new API DX12 Ultimate actually means for the future of gaming and why you need to know about it. Hey what is up guys welcome to our hardware my name is robin i'm your swedish host and friend with bad posture and poor accent well, there has been a lot of leaks surrounding this upcoming big navi and only a few comments from amd actually and what we do know amd's got big plans for 4k dominance many details are yet unknown a release date around q4 has been confirmed well, of course that will be our navi 2x family of a product we'll introduce that those products at the end of this end of this year but that's about it tweak town has published what they believe could be the final specs for upcoming big navi or the rx 6900 xt or the 5950 xt whatever you want to call it now taking a look at these latest rumors uh, seems kind of legit i have to say we got an optimized 7 nanometer node as for the architecture we pretty much know it's a 7 nanometer node we pretty much already know it's rdna2 we do believe it's got eight 80 compute units and this will give us 5120 steam processors and this would ultimately give us 17.5 teraflops of compute power and in comparison Nvidia's current flagship the RTX 2080 Ti has 13.45 teraflops but keep in mind Nvidia's got plans on dropping their upcoming Ampere architecture around the same time frame as well in Q4 so things are looking you know very interesting to say the least. Now as Microsoft and announced the X12 Ultimate, AMD went out and assured us that all of their upcoming RDNA 2 based graphics cards coming in Q4 will have full support for the X12 Ultimate, which more or less confirms that AMD's upcoming 6000 series graphics cards will have ray tracing support and this is very interesting. And so we pretty much know already uh, AMD's big Navi is RDNA 2 and it has ray tracing support, which shouldn't really come as a surprise to anyone. Now speaking of the X12 Ultimate, it has been confirmed for both PC and Xbox Series X and although we do believe PS5 is part of this as well thanks to its custom RDNA 2 graphics chip and according to Microsoft by unifying the graphics platform across PC and Xbox Series X DX12 Ultimate serves as a force multiplier for the entire gaming ecosystem and no longer do the cycles operate independently and so what this means is that the upcoming games built on DX12 Ultimate API should also be a lot lot easier to port between the platforms, possibly resulting in more games being released on every platform basically. And this is very exciting news as a gamer. And a developer at Microsoft recently demonstrated how the Xbox Series X stand against the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti when it comes to handling the new mesh shaders technology, which again is a big part of the DX12 Ultimate API. And this is a feature that is supported in the hardware in both Nvidia's Turing architecture as well as AMD's 
this upcoming RDNA 2. Now, mesh shaders ultimately give developers the opportunity to create detailed geometry for 3D objects with significantly lower impact on the performance compared to previous technologies. Now, another purpose for DX12 Ultimate is to provide consumers with guidance when purchasing new graphics hardware, where you will find a sticker. I guess presented on the box of the graphics card to assure that the model is on par with the features that DX12 offers. And noteworthy here is that DX12 Ultimate should be seen as an option rather than a requirement for future gaming. And graphics hardware that only supports the DX12 base level will still be compatible with upcoming games, but you ultimately miss out on the new implementations the new technologies bring, such as variable ray shading, ray tracing, and this new cold technology called mesh shaders. I'm Martin Fuller, one of Microsoft's senior developers from the company's advanced technology group, explains how mesh shaders gives developers enhanced capabilities with the Xbox Series X and upcoming DX12 Ultimate for Windows. And in a video, he compares the implementation of mesh shaders on Xbox Series X with a PC equipped with Nvidia's flagship, a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti graphics card. And right now, it turns out that the Series X supports significantly larger groups of geometrical calculations, basically. A Microsoft gaming console can handle groups of 256 so-called simmed waves, while the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti can only handle 32. Now, in the video demonstration, the PC equipped with the RTX 2080 Ti is hooked up to a 1440p monitor, while the Xbox Series X is connected to a 4K screen. And according to Martin, normally rendering with vertex shaders takes about 55 microseconds on the Series X, while on the PC, the same scene takes 72 microseconds to render at 1440p, which gives a hint of the power inside Series X and the power of the RDNA 2 architecture. Worth having in mind here guys is that because this is a completely new feature for the DX12 API, we might as well see better performance from the Turing based GPUs as Nvidia brings out better optimized drivers. And speaking of support, AMD was fast to assure that their upcoming architecture RDNA 2 will have fully support for the new features and the new interface that the X12 Ultimate brings, and at the same time, Nvidia also assures us that they already have a broad support for the X12 Ultimate for their current range, where all the current GeForce RTX series graphics cards are included on the compatibility list, and thus the company becomes exclusive in the market right now with support for this new interface until AMD releases their new graphics cards later in the year, which brings us back to Big Navi and the possible RX 5950 XT or 6900 XT. A huge limitation with the current RDNA architecture seems to be the fact that it only supports up to 40 compute units and this to me suggests that AMD is forced to make the jump over to RDNA 2 if they wanted to make a beefier GPU unless they decided to make another two GPUs glued together on one PCB disaster which I would find quite unlikely. Now if you don't know AMD's current best performing Navi based GPU right now is the RX 50 700 XT based on the Navi 10 GPU with 40 compute units, which is the biggest GPU in the Navi family. And if AMD wanted to make a more powerful Navi based GPU, they would technically be forced of jumping over to RDNA 2 to be able to get support for more than 40 compute units. And again, Tweaktown is suggesting the following. We got an optimized 7 nanometer node, RDNA 2 architecture, 80 compute units, 5120 Steam processors, and 17.5 teraflops of compute performance and obviously hardware accelerated ray tracing support but still it seems like nobody really knows for sure what big navi uh, look like or will perform like so definitely do take these numbers with a grain of salt and what we do know is that we should expect a whole new lineup of graphics cards from the red team start rolling out in q4 with big navi being one of them and i promise to keep you guys up to date as more info comes out and as always i'd love to hear your thoughts thank you so much for sticking around this long and watch either of these two videos for more content and i will see you guys over there